And without fail, silver and gold are the prime beneficiaries of that exact environment. So could it be different this time? Maybe, but you can find zero precedent in all of you know economic history where they, where they weren't. So this is the time I think to have some, I'm not saying, hey, go all in, sell everything and go all in on silver. But if I didn't have any right now that I could touch, um, you know, I would wanna rectify that as soon as possible. I mean, if you look at the commitment of traders report, that shows you what literally what the smart money is doing in the futures market. I'm talking about JP Morgan, the big banks. What were they doing back on March 8th of uh, earlier this year? They were they were uh, heavily short to this market. So they posit they, they uh, profited on this pullback. Well, what are they doing now? It's the polar opposite of before we had this brutal sell off. They've been covering shorts and buying hand over fist on this pullback. Now, the COT is not a perfect uh, timing indicator. <clears throat> But what it does do is tell you if you're in like the buy zone or the sell zone. And often when you're at a setup like this, it would be a historic anomaly for a significant rally to not follow in the months ahead with the COT set up this way. And that's the futures market. Uh, and you would know probably be better than me, but uh, premiums on physical, people are scooping up physical hand over fist as well. So, you know, smart money is buying. That doesn't mean that we turn around and rally to the moon tomorrow, but I think we're clearly, clearly in the buy zones. I think anything's under $20 in silver uh, is just an absolute gift. If you and I go look at, hey, what's the price of silver today? What we're seeing is a price set on supply and demand of paper contracts that are bought and sold and created at will on the commodities exchange. Um, if all of our listeners, if you know, millions of us went out and bought all, all the silver that we possibly could, it wouldn't affect the price at all because the physical market and the paper market are two different things. Um, and that, that's why we're seeing those premiums where you can, you know, you want to get your hand on a silver eagle. It's probably over 30 bucks. Yeah, I think this is healthy. We've had a really nice bounce here, especially in silver. So nothing goes straight up. Um, you know, things ebb and flow. Um, so what we're looking for is higher highs and higher lows. What we don't want to see is a lower low. The recent low was $18 and one cent. Um, so as long as we make a higher low above 18, the, the things look I'm optimistic that we have seen the lows and that the worst is behind us. And interestingly, for anyone who looks closely at charts, you know, I don't, I don't use a lot of indicators, but I do put the 50 day moving average and the 200 day moving average uh, overlaid on a daily chart. And you can see right now today, we're right, right at that 50 day moving average. That's where we pulled back to. And that's significant because, you know, um, institutional trading algorithms, big money, they use those moving averages. So, you know, it would be nice to see this 50 day moving average hold. So today could be a nice buying opportunity. Uh, so what's the point about, I think sounds like two part question. So first of all, what's the point of buying precious metals? There's many reasons, but first and foremost, it's an insurance policy against uh, reckless, you know, governments or wh wherever you may live. Um, you know, tell that to the people in Venezuela right now. Um, I, I, if they don't have some physical metal, I'm sure that um, I bet they sure wish they did. And if they would like to don't have some, but would like to get it, good luck. You know, there's no way they can get it right now. So first of all, it's an insurance policy. And then second of all, it can be uh, there over long periods of time, precious metals tend to make terrible investments. However, there are brief periods in the cycle where they can make fantastic speculations. And in a short period of time, you can make up for all of that, you know, past poor performance, just like in 2011, in March of 2020. And all of the signs are pointing to that, in the months ahead, we're very likely to see a fantastic rally in silver. So you can use it for insurance and you, uh, a vehicle to speculate in. So this is a longer term chart. This goes back to 2019. And there's really nothing cosmic about this chart. The first thing I look for whenever I look at a chart is, um, first of all, are we? It, what's the trend? So are we up or down? And you can see here, there is no trend. We're just sideways between you know, around $20 and $30 on the upside. And then secondly, is there any clear patterns that can give us some, uh, you know, good idea of where the price is headed next. And there's really no clear patterns here. But what I do see when I look at this chart is we were deeply oversold. Um, the, as oversold as you, you know, you, you only see this level of technical uh, being oversold, you know, every handful of years, if that. So the last time where this oversold was March 2020. And that was right against major support at $18. So a bounce was very likely here. And we're seeing that. So the next resistance is 2150 to 22. That was previous support. So getting above that next hurdle will be the you know next step towards confirming a technical reversal in silver. But from a bigger picture perspective, I think anything below $20 is just an absolute bargain. And why is that $20 level so critical? Well, it's just a psychological level. I mean, 
silver is the only commodity on the planet that's trading less than where it was back in 1980, over 40 years ago. And not only is it less, it's less than half. Um, just, so just that alone shows just how historically undervalued silver is. And you look at a time where is silver uh, supply increasing? No, it's decreasing. Um, is demand decreasing? No, demand is increasing, um, not just from investors, but in industry and in solar panels and all of these uh, battery metals and think, or excuse me, uh, batteries, electrification. So the, the setup, if you're looking for a value, you know, wh where's the value? I, silver is the most undervalued asset on the planet right now. We have a viewer here wanting to know about if silver does break above that 1980 high of $50, where will it go from there? He asks, if silver breaks out to $50 or so, is it going to stay broken out this time or is it going to go right back down to $15 like it did back in 2015? So my crystal ball is broken, so I don't know the future with precision, but my, I high, strongly suspect that $50 will not be, that, that high will be taken out. Um, we could probably run up to towards 50, see a meaningful pullback. And then once we break through it a second time, that uh, that becomes support. And I think we're going to see, uh, you know, triple digit silver in the years ahead. They may sound, sound ridiculous when we're down here around 20. But, you know, if history is any guide, uh, triple digit silver is coming. So I, I don't think we're going to run up towards 50 and then pull back to 15 again. I, I view that as a very, very low probability outcome. Now, when it comes to gold, what are you seeing right now? Uh, gold is held up much better than silver, um, but it's also more susceptible to, um, I, I think the lows are very likely in for both gold and silver, but I have more conviction in making that statement with silver than gold. And one reason is the structure of the COT report. Um, it's, it's bullish, but it's not as like historically extreme as that for silver. Um, it is bullish, but you know, it's not that major historic extreme. And then you can see the chart for gold here. Uh, we broke out above this downtrend line that goes back to March, and now we're just back testing it. So the chart looks pretty constructive as from a trend perspective. We've maintained an uptrend in gold. Um, you can see this 2018 uptrend line, which coincided with the, that horizontal support at 1675. We tested that last uh, couple of weeks ago perfectly. Um, so I'm not sure if that answered that question specifically, but gold looks good from a technical perspective, but uh, the COT structure is not quite as bullish as that of silver. Yeah. So first of all, it's real yields that matter the most, but you know, this is a chart of the nominal yield on the 10 uh, year treasury. It goes back 40 years. And what you can see here is we were the most overbought that we've been in four decades, right up against resistance. So what that tells me is we're very likely to see a pullback in yields. And I think that makes logical sense as well, because I think most of the fed rate hike rhetoric is more than fully priced in already. Um, so if they do anything less than a 75 uh, uh, basis point rate hike next month, you know, I think yields are likely to fall, even though they're raising rates because it's already priced in. Um, so I'm looking for a pullback in yields, and that should be a further tailwind to uh, the metals and commodities in general. What we're seeing uh, in governments around the world, specifically here in the United States, is nothing new. It's not, there's nothing new under the sun. You can go back millennia, and I think Mike Maloney calls it the seven stages of empire. And we're clearly in that sixth, seventh stage and governments, you know, promise more than they can deliver on. Um, they don't have enough tax receipts to cover their obligations. And then what happens? They debase the currency. It happens every single time over and over and over again without fail. And without fail, silver and gold are the prime beneficiaries of that exact environment. So could it be different this time? Maybe, but you can find zero precedent in all of, you know, economic history where they, where they weren't. So this is the time, I think, to have some. I'm not saying, hey, go all in, sell everything and go all in on silver. But if I didn't have any right now that I could touch, um, you know, I would want to rectify that as soon as possible. Yeah, it, it's a sad reality that, unfortunately, the average retail investor buys at the exact worst time and they sell at the exact worst time. You've got smart money and dumb money. And, you know, back in March, uh, when gold was up near record highs, that's when the average retail person was buying hand over fist. And now we're, we've pulled back. And, you know, people hate it. Um, just go on social media. People hate silver and gold right now. That's the time to be buying. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I like to follow the smart money. Um, there's, they're, they're smarter than I am. And, you know, the smart money is buying right now. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to follow in their lead.